With the first pick of the draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Aiden Hutchinson out of Michigan. The Jaguars have been looking to pair another elite pass rusher with Josh Allen, and while there's heavy debate on who the best edge rusher is in this class, Hutchinson flashes the quickness and upside to be a star for this defense. With the second pick, the Lions are taking Kayvon Thibodeau, an edge rusher from Oregon. There's been a bunch of worries about Thibodeau's character, but at the end of the day, I think the Lions take the best talent available. The Lions have expressed their desire to build out from the trenches, and Thibodeau slots an instantly at the edge spot after the departure of Trey Flowers. With the third pick, the Texans are taking Ikem Aquanu, an offensive tackle from North Carolina State. Aquanu is a special talent, as he provides rare traits for a man his size. Despite his pass blocking deficiencies, he can be an instant starter at tackle or a guard if the Texans want to keep Titus Howard at his right tackle position. With the fourth pick, the New York Jets select Trayvon Walker, edge rusher out of Georgia. Coach Robert Sala has had a history of heavy investment in edge rushers, and with Carl Lawson returning and the chance to add a top talent in this class at the position, we should start to see the Jets' defense make some major strides for next season. With the fifth pick, the Giants are taking Evan Neal from Alabama. The Giants' offensive line was in disarray last year, and they're almost forced just to take the best lineman available. Neal is a great piece as the Giants continue to try to rebuild their line. With the sixth pick of the draft, the Carolina Panthers take Desmond Ritter, quarterback out of Cincinnati. While he isn't my top quarterback, Ritter has intriguing tools and potential and has been getting plenty of smoke for being viewed as the top quarterback option by the NFL. With their jobs on the line, I expect Rule and Fitterer to swing for the fences at number six and take their favorite passer of this class. With the seventh pick, the Giants are taking Ahmad Gardner, a cornerback from Cincinnati. After grabbing Neal, the Giants turn to the other side of the ball and grab the best defensive prospect available. Gardner offers the potential to be a lockdown corner in the league, and he strengthens the Giants' pass defense. With the 8th pick, the Falcons are taking Devin Lloyd, a linebacker from Utah. The Falcons are devoid of talent on the defensive side, and although edge rusher and wide receiver are appealing options, as we saw with Michael Parsons last year, a stud linebacker can transform a defense. At number 9, the Seahawks surprise a bit and take Trevor Penning, offensive tackle out of Northern Iowa. While many have this pick as a quarterback or Charles Cross, I expect Seahawks to continue to be unorthodox in their draft approach. Penning matches all the measurements and traits Seattle looks for in their linemen and has the upside to become a long-term stud at tackle for whatever team picks him. To round out the top 10, the New York Jets select Jamison Williams, wide receiver out of Alabama. While Williams is coming off of an ACL tear, his deep speed and capabilities in open space are a tremendous fit for the Jets' offense and should be an extremely enticing pairing with their young quarterback as the team looks to start competing soon. With the 11th pick, the Commanders are taking Garrett Wilson, a wide receiver from Ohio State. It's no secret that the Commanders are in love with the OSU receivers this year, and this pick could easily be Chris Olave. Wilson can offer an extra threat to the Commanders' offense, as they look to right the ship with Carson Wentz at the helm. With the 12th pick, the Minnesota Vikings grab Derek Stingley Jr., cornerback out of LSU. While there have been some inconsistencies in his play, Stingley has the potential to be a shutdown corner in the NFL, which the Vikings desperately need. With Patrick Peterson there to mentor him for a season and ease him in, the pick seems like a perfect fit for both sides. With the 13th pick, the Texans are taking Kyle Hamilton, a safety from Notre Dame. Hamilton is potentially the most talented player in the draft, and he slides due to some concerns about his coverage ability. With their second first, the Texans can afford to take a risk on Hamilton's upside and add a player to a defense that doesn't really have one right now. With the 14th pick, the Baltimore Ravens select Jermaine Johnson, the second edge rusher out of Florida State. With Tyus Bowser likely out for a large part of next season, edge rusher is a top priority for the Ravens. Nabbing Johnson here at 14 is a great value pick to form an exciting young pass rushing duo of Johnson and Odafe Owe. At pick number 15, the Philadelphia Eagles select Jordan Davis, nose tackle out of Georgia. The Eagles have been heavily linked to both Georgia defensive linemen, and with the chance to grab an uber-athletic 6'6", 341-pound monster, the Eagles walk away very happy with their first of two first-round picks. With the 16th pick, the Saints are taking Charles Cross, an offensive tackle from Mississippi State. The Saints would be pretty thrilled in real life if Cross was there at 16, I think he goes a lot higher in the real draft. Cross is potentially the best pass protector in the draft, and he can slot in to replace Armstead, who left for Miami in free agency. With the 17th pick of the NFL draft, Los Angeles Chargers select Zion Johnson, offensive guard out of Boston College. While the need for tackle still exists, the Chargers opt to instead add the best lineman on the board, and that comes in the form of the versatile Zion Johnson, who will play a huge piece in protecting Justin Herbert long term. With the Eagles back on the clock at 18, they decide to go Drake London, wide receiver out of USC. London has the size and mentality to absolutely control the game as a wide receiver, and he fits perfectly on the Eagles, working across from young star Devonta Smith to help add to the receiver room. With the 19th pick, the Saints are back on the clock, and they're taking Malik Willis, quarterback from Liberty. 
The Saints gave Winston a one-year deal after striking out on Watson, but they still need a long-term solution at QB. They're clearly not sold that it's Winston, and Willis offers the highest upside of any QB in this draft. With the 20th pick, the Steelers are taking Kenny Pickett, a quarterback from Pittsburgh. I really like the Mitch Trubisky signing for the Steelers, and I think he can be an adequate starter in the league. However, I think the Steelers go with Pickett. They're familiar with his game and what he can offer to a team, and I think he's capable of running the offense that they have in their mind. With the 21st pick, the New England Patriots add Kenyon Green, offensive guard out of Texas A&M. With the decision to trade Shaq Mason, the Patriots have a giant hole at offensive guard. Adding in Kenyon Green not only addresses a need, but should add a young and extremely talented lineman to the roster as well. With the 22nd pick, the Packers are taking Chris Olave, a wide receiver from Ohio State. The Packers are lacking talent in the wide receiver room after the trade of Devontae Adams, and Olave steps in and injects a much-needed talent. Olave is pro-ready with his route running and his speed and should offer instant production for the Packers and Aaron Rodgers. With the 23rd pick, the Cardinals are taking Trent McDuffie, a cornerback from Washington. The Cardinals are no stranger to Washington defensive backs, having selected Buda Baker and Byron Murphy in previous year's drafts. Arizona is in some desperate need of cornerback help, and McDuffie can step in and be a starter right away with his athleticism and tackling. At pick 24, the Dallas Cowboys select Tyler Linderbaum, center out of Iowa. The Cowboys could go elsewhere based purely on need, but Jerry has proven to be fine picking BPA if the player is talented enough. And Linderbaum definitely is. With decent but not spectacular center play as of late, the Cowboys picked the top center in this class and should reap the rewards because of it. With the 25th pick, the Bills are taking Kyler Gordon, a cornerback from Washington. The Bills don't have a lot of holes on their roster, but their biggest weakness is at cornerback. Gordon offers great athleticism and smoothness and can be an instant starter on the outside for the Bills, who have been looking for a partner for Trey White for a very long time. With the 26th pick, the Titans are taking Traylon Burks, a wide receiver from Arkansas. The Titans bit the bullet and released Julio Jones, but in doing so, created a major hole wide receiver. Burks does have some work to do as a route runner, but is so strong and fast that he should fit in well with their play-action heavy offense. With the 27th pick, I have the Buccaneers selecting Devontae Wyatt, defensive tackle out of Georgia. Wyatt is a beast on the interior, and the Buccaneers still don't have clarity on if Ndamukong Sue will be back. Regardless, they go BPA and add what could hopefully be a solid immediate contributor as they gear up for a potential Super Bowl run. With the 28th pick, the Packers select George Karlaftis, an edge rusher from Purdue. The Packers ran a heavy rotation at edge last year and need to replace the snaps that Zardarius Smith took with him. Karlaftis offers great power and can provide meaningful snaps right away for the Packers as they gear up for another playoff run. With the 29th pick, the Chiefs select Kair Elam, a cornerback from Florida. Elam is a perfect fit for the Chiefs' man-heavy scheme, and Kansas City is relying on some unproven talent right now. Elam will be a great fit next to Legereus Sneed, and can play the outside position when Sneed moves to the slot on nickel downs. With the 30th pick, the Chiefs select Bernard Raymond. The Chiefs have a great offensive line, but have a hole at right tackle, and the offensive line is a weak link position group. Raymond is a project at the moment, but with some more seasoning, he can be a great right tackle. With the 31st pick, the Bengals select Andrew Booth, a cornerback from Clemson. Booth has some injury issues that could cause him to slide in the draft, but he offers great value for a team that's willing to take a chance on him. Booth can replace Eli Apple at the outside corner position and be the final piece on the defense that showed great improvement last year. With the 32nd and final pick in the first round, the Lions select Jahan Dotson, a wide receiver from Penn State. The Lions are in the position to go almost truly BPA here and land on Dotson. Dotson has great hands and route running ability and offers a safe option for the Lions as they continue the rebuild and add talent. And that's the two minute drill.